Hello, this is Julianne of Leafling Learns. I talk about my language learning journey, mostly focused on immersion learning techniques with a healthy dose of moderation and self-compassion. Today, I'm preparing to step into a new language journey. I have been toying with the idea of starting to learn Yiddish. I feel like it's time to start looking into what I can do to start my Yiddish learning journey. For the past two years, my main focus has been Japanese. It's been very consistently Japanese. I don't think I would delve into any sort of new language stuff if I were still feeling uncomfortably in the beginner zone of Japanese. I would not at all be toying with any ideas of looking at new languages. I know that I would be spread too thin. So why Yiddish? I am of Jewish heritage. I, however, I didn't grow up with like any Jewish anything. My grandma was Jewish and I felt a really strong connection with her, but I was not raised with any religion actually. Like, I, so I'm not familiar with Judaism. My grandma actually identified as a Jewish Buddhist secular humanist. <laughs> so she was not, you know, deep into the traditions of Judaism proper or anything like that. As much as I appreciated growing up secularly and being allowed to think for myself, I will say that I wish I had more of a connection to my heritage, and I don't think it's necessary to have strong ties to your heritage to have a fulfilling life or anything like that. It's just something that I'm interested in. The fact that I'm interested in languages and there is a language that I know that my relatives spoke, even if I did not witness it, being able to connect to them and to my heritage in that way is very interesting to me. So yeah, I, I never went to temple to synagogue. I didn't go to the summer camps that all of my Jewish friends were going to and I felt very left out and I always felt kind of like not Jewish enough, if you know what I mean. Knowing that technically I'm Jewish but knowing that I am not as Jewish as these groups of kids who were getting these experiences and had that to connect on. <laughs> I'm not interested in Yiddish in order to fit in or anything like that. It's more just like being able to access some of that connection to my heritage. Sounds pretty cool. And the language sounds cool as well. I like how it sounds and that's huge for me. Back when the Duolingo Yiddish course came out, I did um, kind of start messing around with that. So I learned the alphabet a little bit. It's been many months, so I feel like I'm gonna have to relearn the and forgive me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, I don't know Yiddish yet, the Aleph Beis. But anyway, this is an interesting journey for me because the resources available for Yiddish versus Japanese are obviously different. And Japanese has this very strong, often dramatic um, collection of like learning approaches. There are all these roadmaps available for like quote unquote, how to learn Japanese the best way, and if you take it with a grain of salt and adjust it to your own needs, like those, some of those roadmaps can be helpful. I'm finding there's, there are absolutely so many resources for Yiddish, and there's a very vibrant community, it seems, around learning Yiddish, but it's not, it doesn't compare to the extent that Japanese has all of these sometimes contentious <laughs> with all these roadmaps. I was thinking today we could look at some resources and see if maybe I can create a roadmap for myself. Maybe you're also interested in picking up a language that is quote unquote endangered or threatened um, and trying to find that community and those fun things that you can do in that language. So let's take a look here. Can you come here please? Oh my god, thank you. Hi. Hi. Oh, she's here. Oh, she's here. Do you want to look with me? Oh, we'll just have a little sit, huh? We'll just have a little sit, huh? Just a little sit? Let's check these out. So, one of the things I was thinking of looking at is something that I've... It's a bit out of my comfort zone, but as part of 
my interest in learning Yiddish does have to do with, you know, connecting to my heritage and connecting with other people. Um, okay, goodbye. I was thinking of looking into classes to kind of get me started. Most of my learning is self-directed, you know, self-study. But I started my Japanese journey in an immersion summer camp. So I think when you're interacting with somebody and you're immersing in that way, it, it can lead to some really strong memories. And when you're talking with somebody in your target language, they're trying to help you figure out like what one word means, like putting it together in your target language is a really powerful thing. Even though <laughs> I like to keep to myself, and even though I am very frightened by speaking any of my target languages, um, I'm just like very skittish and a bit insecure, I, I was thinking of checking out a Yiddish course and getting started that way. I thought that might be a very motivating way to kind of kickstart the journey. So I'm looking at right now the Worker's Circle. I found a, a few websites that did Yiddish courses online, but this was the one that kind of stood out to me the most. I was thinking maybe we can just look at this. I can figure out which one I want to take, potentially. Obviously, I'm a beginner. <laughs> I'm starting from scratch, which is kind of exciting. It's weird. I haven't started from scratch in a very long time. That's what's kind of exciting about this. So, Beginner's 1. Beginners Conversation 1 and Intensive Beginners. Those are my options. Obviously, I'm not doing Beginners 2 or Beginners Conversation 2 or Beginners 3 or Advanced Beginners Conversation. They have a lot of options. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to look at Beginners 1. So they have several different teachers at different times, and it's once a week, so it goes from March... And if you're watching this in the future, they seem to always have these courses um, going on for like the different, I think they have like spring, summer, fall. It's like two and a half months uh, long. This course helps students acquire a vocabulary of close to 200 words and the ability to form simple sentences in Yiddish in the present tense. That's nice that you kind of see what kind of grammar you'll get to do. The natural approach used in this course is based on the latest research in second language acquisition and allows students to acquire Yiddish in a way similar to that in which they learn their first language, by making direct connections between a word and its meaning in a communicative context. Okay, so that does sound like my immersion summer camp. Oh, okay, so it uses Yiddish pop, and when I look at this tutor's bio, tutor, teacher, sorry, this, this teacher helps develop Yiddish Pop, and I have heard of Yiddish Pop in my journeys. Yiddish Pop is a cool website where you're picking up words um, through playing these interactive games. Um, it, it seemed like there were little stories in Yiddish Pop. And knowing the alphabet is not required. You can go in knowing literally nothing. Good to know. This other beginner's one class, same amount of time, and... This one says, build basic reading, speaking, and writing skills and knowledge of some fundamentals of grammar through the communicative approach. I've heard this phrase used before, but I've never actually looked up what it necessarily means. I have an idea of what it means, but let's just Google it and find out exactly what we're getting ourselves into. Learners in environments using communication to learn and practice the target language by interactions with one another and their instructor the study of authentic texts, those written in the target language for purposes other than language learning, so immersion style learning, um, and the use of the language both in class and outside of class. That was a weird sentence. Learners converse about personal experiences with partners and instructors teach topics outside of the realm of traditional grammar to promote language skills in all types of situations. So the emphasis is on interaction as the means of learning the things. This one does use a textbook. It uses in einem. Again, I'm, I don't... You cannot be mad at me for pronouncing it wrong because I have not taken the course yet. I've looked at this textbook. It is from the Yiddish Book Center, and it looks dope. Honestly, it looks dope. I would have to buy that, though. So I'm just going to keep perusing in case... 
because Yiddish pop you don't have to buy anything for that particular beginner's one. This beginner's one would be if you're down to make that investment in the textbook. Another beginner's one here, and it uses the textbook Colloquial Yiddish. That is a textbook that I have. This one interests me because I have the textbook. And there's also a supplementary reading and listening materials. Very good. So beginner's conversation one, build basic conversational skills in Yiddish, and this one does use colloquial Yiddish, that textbook as well. That sounds very good for the types of people who love to talk in their target language. I know that's a lot of people because a lot of people are in this for the talking to people, right? Um, that makes sense, but maybe beginner's conversation one is not for me, but beginner's one is more my speed. So then there's one other option here, intensive beginners. This is intriguing to me because this one is twice a week. So if once a week for two and a half months doesn't seem like it's going to get in there to the extent that you want to, this one is twice a week and it seems to be over the full three months with no Maybe there's one, yeah, there's one break in April, but it, go, it goes till the end of May, which the others did not. This one says, this class will focus on oral acquisition during class time, then grammar and reading will be reinforced through homework. So this is the first time that homework's been mentioned explicitly. Maybe there's homework in the other ones, but that makes sense to me. This one uses the in item textbook as well. And for this one, it does want you to know the alphabet ahead of time. It's hard to choose, isn't it, between intensive and just standard beginners. It really dep it depends on who you are and it depends on what kind of time you have and it depends on if you trust yourself <laughs> to do homework and to uh, be able to keep up with that kind of thing. You would have to consider, you would have to consider what makes the most sense for you. Something that's really important to language learning, right, is consistency and if, if outside accountability is super helpful to you, knowing like, oh, in a few days I have my Yiddish lesson, I have to make sure to like do my Yiddish stuff outside of my class, then, you know, that those dates keep coming. So you're going to keep being reminded to put in that time and effort. Obviously there's no correct choice, but it's great that there's so many different options for different styles of learners, right? So I feel like Right now I'm leaning toward beginners one, just because I do have Japanese still on the docket. I don't want to pump the brakes on Japanese in order to make time for Yiddish. I want Yiddish to like just kind of slip into what I already have going on. And so I'm leaning toward beginners one, and I'm specifically leaning toward the beginners one course that uses colloquial Yiddish because I have that one. I'm leaning either toward that specific beginner's one or intensive beginner's one. I have not made up my mind. That is my official stance right now. I'm enticed by both. So the worker's circle, great resource. And I mean, let's be honest here, you may not be a beginner. Maybe you're interested in intermediate, which they have an equal amount of different classes for. Advanced, let's see. They have a lot of it. Oh my goodness. They have a lot of advanced Yiddish classes. That's cool. The history of Yiddish theater in four illustrated presentations. That's so, this is motivating to get to advanced level. Now that we've looked at these courses, let's look at some other resources. I wanted to talk about the Yiddish Book Center, which is an amazing website that I found. And that's where I started learning the alphabet. So the Yiddish Book Center, they're the ones who publish in Einem, that textbook. And if you go to their Yiddish language learning, learn the Yiddish alphabet. I found this super helpful. They have printables. You can learn print and cursive forms. There's a chart for easy reference and it's like a fancy chart. I found this so cool. There's a practice reading section where there's audio that goes with it. I found this really helpful because just rote memorization of an alphabet is one thing, but then like actually trying to read it really solidifies those new alphabets for me. And something really cool that I did not know about before I started diving into this is that the Yiddish Book Center has this amazing free digital Yiddish library of more than 11,000 titles. Like these are all just books that you have access to. 
So it's amazing for somebody like me who self-studies and does immersion learning techniques to just have access to all these books and I get to learn about the culture, I get to learn about history. Yiddish audiobooks too, all while learning my target language. It's crazy. So yeah, it says including contemporary oral histories, lectures, Yiddish audiobooks, and more. It's insanity. There's just so much there. There's children's literature. It's crazy that all of this is free. There are a lot more resources, honestly. Like, there's so much that I cannot even get into. Um, I can leave links in the description. Yiddishchildrensbooks.com. Like, there's... And YouTube, obviously, is a huge, amazing place to find language learning things of all sorts, but there's a lot of Yiddish stuff on YouTube. So yeah, all those are the things I wanted to highlight mainly, but I will link to some other interesting resources in the description. This is where I'm planning on starting. I am going to get back to learning the alphabet. I know that the courses say that I don't need to learn the alphabet from the jump if I'm starting the non-intensive one, but I know that I want <laughs> to know it. That's just my truth, and I already kind of know it, right? So it's just getting reacquainted with that. Maybe I'll take a peek at the colloquial Yiddish um, textbook to see how I feel about it. But yeah, then I think I want to get started with one of those um, worker circle Yiddish courses that's starting very soon. So if you want to get on it as well, check out the website to register for one of those. They start in March um, 2022. Out of my comfort zone a little bit doing an output focused course. I just wanted to try something different. I just wanted to see how it went. Um, I'm interested in connecting with different people and I'll let you know how it goes. I'm thinking of vlogging my experience a little bit as I'm at the start of a language learning journey because I haven't been at the start in like 13 years or something, 15 years. I'm excited to have found that there are so many resources because you may not expect that initially when you're looking into an endangered or threatened language. You know, so many lists say so many different things based on the numbers of speakers, but it really is an exciting revelation that there is this vibrant community focused around speaking Yiddish keeping Yiddish alive, you know, all of that, and making sure that learners have good places to start learning the language. Because not all of us have a, a bubby to teach us. <laughs> not all of us have a grandma, a great grandma around to teach us the ropes, you know, or at least not any further than swear words. I'm excited. If you have any favorite <laughs> Yiddish resources, let me know. I'm interested. See you next time. If you like this video, you may like my video about reigniting my Spanish learning, or maybe my video on how I started learning Japanese and that uh, summer immersion camp that I mentioned. I go more into detail about that in this video on the screen. Alright, bye bye